This is TPC, and it's time to fucking party. that time again it is uh it's friday the week is uh it's kind of no an end it was a good week um i did extremely well this week i will uh i will uh take my hat off to thine self um i actually had the largest percentage profit trade uh for a single trade in um probably in my probably in my career uh in my three years um it was really great. I uh, took a trade that had uh, on Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, I closed the trade at 550% profit. And then, then that record got smashed. Thursday, I closed out a trade at 730% profit. Um, wow. Wow. See, I made it. I made it, mom. I can do this. Um, yeah, but that was after taking a very, very hard loss, uh, last week. Last week was pretty rough. Um, which it was pretty rough for everyone, uh, that betted on the wrong side. Um, and that was me. I was them. We are one. Um, but uh, I would love to go over um, love to go over one of my trades this week uh, with you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this puppy on over here. Yeah, yeah, baby. Um, so uh, you got to bear with me just a hair. So I um, on Thursday I did short or Wednesday and Thursday I did short the market. I shorted. Um, TQQQ. It was, it was a pretty good day, man. Um, for me, it was a bad day for a lot of people that are invested, um, in, uh, the long term, and they have purchased at a rate that is higher than the current market value, uh, which is on almost every security, uh, on the stock market and the crypto market. Mm, not the housing market yet, but, um, there's a couple, uh, Couple reports that are indicating that we uh, could be seeing some major pullback in the housing market here very soon, um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the lore. I'm here to tell you that a uh, little bit of whiskey, a little bit of Jesus, produces profit. Just ask Benny Hinn. And if you don't know who that is, then good chances are that your mental health is better than mine. But if you do, I will, uh, I'll pray for you. Um, but yeah, so this week was pretty cool, man. I, um, it was really, for me, it was, I, I had to take a step back because last week I, I, I lost about 1300 bucks in, uh, three days trading on the market last week in, uh, on the stock market. Um, and that was pretty, uh, pretty hard for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, I was doing pretty good. Um, Last couple of weeks, month, two months, something like that. I've been doing a pretty rock solid, not going to lie. Um, been growing my account and taking really, um, really smart plays. And then I, um, I just got caught up in um, the market dip. When it pulled back, I got caught up in it. And I didn't, um, I didn't cut my losses when I should have, when I knew I should have, I still kept them and kept pushing and kept hoping for a reversal, kept trying to catch a falling knife where, um, you know, you're, you're, you're betting that this is the bottom and now it's going to turn around and it, uh, bit me in the asshole, bit me right in the asshole, uh, last week. 
um, the week previous to this week. Uh, this week, I took a step back and I kind of analyzed, honestly, I analyzed how the market was reacting after any time uh, anybody from the Federal Reserve spoke. And what I did notice is um, the Federal Reserve would speak, uh, you know, somewhere in here, uh, you know, you know, around two o'clock, Fed would come out and talk. And this, I'm just pointing to a space to, to show, you know, um, an example. This might not actually be uh, time stamped properly, but um, anywho, um, this is a good example right here. Um, the, uh, the Fed would speak, the market would rally up, and then, in, and then it would continue to rally that morning, uh, you know, the following morning, and then it would completely reverse. So it was just, it was just a bunch of bullshit. We'd have a, you know, an up and down day. We'd have uh, the Fed speak and then or, or have an interview with NPR or talk on uh, the Wall Street Journal or anything that they were doing. And it was just creating this up and down motion could could be a lot more involved than that. But that's just what I noticed the market correlating with the, the best, in my opinion. So um, I kind of got caught up in it and then I identified the trends. And um, where are we at? Let me make sure. Yeah. So right here on this day is where I took my best trade percentage profit for a single trade um, was here. I had two uh, puts. Um, I, I was betting that the market was going to go down in value. And what the market went down to in value was my profit. So I did, um, I did very well. Uh, right here, I took my trade um, as the market was pulling back. And then I uh, had a complete reversal in, instantly after I took a, um, took a short position. Uh, the market rallied and scared me half to death. And then the market went back down and I started getting happy. And then an aftermarket completely flat. Pre-market, we had a huge fucking jump up and I was terrified. Um, but I remembered... Um, you know, don't get trapped. Don't get don't get trapped up in you know pre market post market stuff. Wait for the market to open and and take its direction. So it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. It would pump up and then go in the complete opposite direction, which was um, down in price. And it just uh, trickled down for a profitable trade all day. I did take some profit off at the table um, pretty early. Not going to lie, I cut myself uh, about fifty percent of profit. I would I would assume. Um, I let one of them go here and then, um, I believe that's at a 2683, uh, mark. And that was just because I did have a, a, a key support and resistance zone there or a support zone there. So, um, I was honestly worried because I did not want the market to, um, take another turn back up and eat up my profit for the day. Um, so I did let some of them rip there. And I can I let um, a couple more contracts stay and held them until um, uh, when was it just before market close. So once I did see um, some consolidation come in and it was gonna and it looked like it was gonna start turning around, I let it rip. So um, very proud of myself. Um, very proud of the man I'm becoming. I am. I am a, a force to be reckoned with. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Um, and I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to me for believing in me. No, uh, that was, I was quoting Uncle Snoop there. Um, but yeah, very, very cool week to me. Um, you know, I really, I really felt like I took a step back from my losses last week and identified the trend that I was getting caught up in, or I was um, almost like getting left out of. So as soon as, as soon as I thought the direction was going to continue, it would turn um, on both sides going up and down. I tried both of them last week and it didn't work. Um, but this week it uh, I did, I did get on the right side of the momentum and we won. So definitely going to be uh, definitely going to be looking for some more of that momentum. Yeah, so um, this coming up week, I am I'm going to be trying out a new indicator. Um, 
I have, I have heard of it, but honestly, um, it's just not something I've ever used too much of. Uh, I, tr- I traditionally, uh, I generally use a more traditional route. I use um, exponential moving average, uh, which is uh, EMAs. So I, I really focus on, which we've talked about this. I've, I focus on the 20 and the 200, which is extremely cookie cutter. Uh, there's a lot of debate on, um, you know, what values are more important. Um, but for me, I always have kind of liked the 20 and the 200. But this coming up week, I'm going to try to incorporate the whole moving average, H-U-L-L, moving average, whole moving average. Um, shouts out to the homie Bereni. Um, he actually did a video on this on his channel. Uh, and it just kind of made a lot more sense to me. It's a lot smoother, um, than, uh, the EMAs. So it's, for me, it's less to look at anytime I'm trading and I don't have to factor in as many parameters. I feel as if that's a, that's a good thing. Um, I could focus more on, you know, um, just the non-important things like when you need to sell the shit and when you need to buy the shit. Um, I'm just kidding. That is the most important things, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to be incorporating the whole moving average this next week. Thanks to the buddy Brenny. Uh, he actually did a video on it on his YouTube channel on, um, indicators that actually work. And I am going to be attempting, which, you know, I'm going to take, uh, take a few paper trades with them and make sure that I fully understand and appreciate and can, uh, incorporate them into my, Uh, trading strategy, but I'm potentially going to be removing my EMAs and replacing them with the, uh, the whole moving average. Um, Just seem to make a lot of sense. Um, Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can put a a link to his video here um, of the whole moving average. I think it's like seven minutes. Uh, There's a couple different indicators on there that he goes over and um, he articulates it very well and uh, shouts out to you, bro. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue to trade the QQQ. Um, I don't know. I just, in, in, in the beginning, I was focused on um, individual stocks. And I don't know. For me, it just seems like I have a better, um, I got a better, I, get, I just have a better vibe with an ETF. Um, and the QQQ does well for me. And then, um, you know, I, I'm a real believer. And if, if you know what you're doing, go ahead and fucking ramp it up and take it on to the TQQQ, which is that three X leveraged, um, uh, ETF. Um, so you can really, you really ramp up your money. And that is what, uh, that is what I traded to get that 550 and 730% profit on, uh, two single trades. Uh, I traded the TQQQ. Uh, both of them were short, meaning I was betting the price was going down. The price went all the way down, and it was great. I uh, very stoked on it. So I am going to continue uh, with the QQQ, um, and I'm not really looking. Honestly, I'm not really looking for another one to trade right now. Another security to trade. I've got my crypto that keeps me busy at night. Uh, always, always fucking with uh, our buddy Solana. Uh, that's just such a fun one to trade for me. I've got uh, my largest investment in cryptocurrency currently is uh, Solana. And I am very proud to say that on this dip, I have averaged my price down by about uh, about $15 a coin. So I think I'm sitting at about like a $58 average per coin overall on uh, on my bag. And it was like a $71 average. Um, So I'm pretty fucking stoked on that, dude. I'm not lying. I'm I'm, I'm poked up and stoked up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Yeah. But yeah, um, also something really cool. Um, This is a question for all you guys out there. If you you are an active trader, uh, please comment below. Uh, on the question right here. I want you to be a part of this uh, because you could, uh, you could really help somebody out like me because <laughs> um, I, when I took my really bad trades last week, I mean, $1,300 might not be a lot to some people. Um, this was like 
in 30 hours, I lost 1300 bucks and I've lost a lot of money in the crypto space, but to be honest, I've never really, I've never took hard hits like that in, on the stock market. So it really did kind of make me, uh, it made me nervous. I was like, damn, like, um, I don't know. It, it just, so, so the question I'm going to ask and the question I'm asking you guys is how did you feel after a bad trade now versus when you first started? So how did you feel about a bad trade? How do you feel about a bad trade now versus when you first started trading? What are the differences? Do you uh, recover faster? Do you feel worse because you're supposed to be this fucking badass trader that's got a bunch of screens, got a light up, you got podcast gear, you're supposed to be doing this shit and you're still taking losses like that? Like, bruh. Or is it like, you know what? I know what I'm doing. I just got caught up in some bullshit. I need to regroup. I need to take a step back. I need to lower my positions down to mitigate my losses. And I need to um, just take a look at my my trading plan and, and beef it back up, get it back where it needs to be. Uh, for me, it was both <laughs> in, a, in a very short amount of time. It was, uh, you know, I, I I was really aggravated at myself for getting caught up in that mess. And not cutting the trades quicker. Um, but you know, I didn't, I, uh, I thought I had, I thought I had calibrated this pattern out that I was looking at. It was like a, a triple top and I was really waiting on the, you know, the long reversal and I was early. I was a day early. And, uh, the next day I still stuck to the trading plan. I thought I was I thought it now for sure. Okay, now it's gonna it's gonna go back up because it just took its its uh, move down, and I was wrong, and I got it wrong again. So it was, you know, two days back to back where I instantly got it wrong and harshly got it wrong and got punished, pain, 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 um, and it affected me for a few hours. Um, yeah, but. I am excited. I'm excited going into the next week. Um, I did see where um, was it? The S and P had fell to a specific point where now they are saying that we're officially entered into a bear market. So um, I don't know. I, I almost feel I almost feel like all those articles. Um, you still have to watch what it says. Like this week when I traded, last week when I traded, I really. I didn't focus as much on technicals as I did um, news and maybe that burned me uh, because this week I focused more on technicals and just follow watching the pattern that, that played out as um, you know, specifically when the federal reserve chairman or anybody from the federal reserve made any, any kind of announcement or, or anything like that. And I identified that pattern and I got on the right side of it thanks to technical analysis. Um, again, it was more like it was like a, a triple top and then a triple bottom. And then I identified a very strong uh, triangle and that was really it. Um, nothing, nothing really else to it. You know, I, I personally, again, I saw the, that 20 uh, moving day average and we couldn't, ever break that on a 15 minute candle. So I knew we're fucking going down, dude. And I just shorted it with, uh, with all my might. And I admittedly, I will tell you, I took a much smaller position, uh, this week. And that seems to help me. Um, when I try to trade like a boss, when I got thousands of dollars out there, I think I, um, I think I'm trading on nerves a little bit more. Um, so if you do find yourself, um, you know, making bad decisions, I think it, I think it's smart to make bad decisions with lower amounts of money, uh, until you can, um, regain your confidence where you are accurately predicting these things and you're trading very well and you're profiting and then maybe, you know, bump your position size up a little bit, but, um, maybe I got cocky because I was winning and, um, uh, I did, I, you know, even with crypto, I've been winning. I've been scalping uh, a couple different cryptos. You know, I, I like to scalp Solana. I like to take 
you know, 15 minute um, trades on Solana and I'm growing my bag on Solana and that's beautiful. Uh, I scalped uh, Luna. Sorry, everyone. Um, but I did. I actually bought, um, I did great. That's all I'm going to say. I did great on Luna. Um, I think in one day I traded Luna like 12 times. Um, and all of them were profitable. And it was great. Um, did kind of make me, I did have mixed feelings about it. Not going to lie, uh, because of all the pain that Luna caused for people. Um, but you know, um, that pain's there and it's not going away. So, uh, I'm a good dude. I got nipples, Jack. Can you milk me? You know? Um, so yeah, so I did, uh, I did well and I am expecting to do well next week. I'm expecting to do well next month. I'm expecting to do well next year. And, uh, the bears are back in town, baby. Not only am I a bull rider, I'm a bear rider. Uh, I wrestle, I wrestle a bear. I'll wrestle a bear. Uh, if the bear market's here, guess what we're going to do guys. All of us are going to get together late at night and we're going to wrestle this bear. Um, if, uh, if the bull market's here, I'm putting on my cowboy hat and I'm going to say giddy up, baby. Um, so I don't really give a fuck what the market does. I just want to be on the right side. Um, going into this next week, you know, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to try to predict. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to follow the pattern that's setting up and I'm going to get on the side of volatility. Uh, meaning if the shit's going down, I'm riding it down. I'm not trying to predict the bottom. I'm not trying to predict the top. I just want to ride the wave, baby. Um, educate yourself on, on puts, educate yourself on shorts. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's very simple. It's the opposite of going. It's the opposite of trading and predicting it's going up. You're trading and predicting it's going down. So, um, do your own research on that. Um, it's very simple. It's, you know, you don't have to think about it any, 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 uh, any more than that. Um, yeah, you, uh, if the market's going down, you go short, you make your money. If the market's going up, you go long and you make your money. Um, we, um, we do have the podcast with the, uh, real estate agent, Mr. Clinton Davis, uh, shouts out to you, Clint. Um, good dude. Great time. Um, good dude. Great time. All gas, no breaks. That's, uh, that's Clinton's saying, he said, listen, I'm a real estate agent. And every morning I walk into the real estate office, the real estate sales floor. And I say, all gas, no breaks to every person. He makes them, he takes a picture with them when they close on their house and he buys them a shirt that says all gas, no breaks. And everybody loves it. These old retired white folks that are here in our community. They, I see them at Walmart. I see them at Publix. Uh, and they're just sporting this shit. You know, if, uh, if you haven't yet, um, go into your um, local um, Jiffy Lube and grab us, uh, grab, a, grab a sticker of ours. Um, this is our uh, sticker. Stop acting fucking broke. Um, printed on a hundred dollar bill, um, very close to counterfeit, but it's not because it says stop acting fucking broke. Um, and stop acting fucking broke. If you're poor, it's your fucking fault. I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it's more like, you know, we're trying to be trendy and we're trying to be, uh, what is it called? Uh, where are you, uh, attention grabbing? Um, but yeah, stop acting fucking broke is what I was doing last week. I was acting fucking broke by being on the wrong side of volatility, by staying married to these trades, by thinking that this shit had to listen to my technical analysis. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's some broke boy shit, broke boy summer right there. If you don't get, if you don't shed that shit. Um, but yeah, really cool time. Um, uh, I hope, I hope you guys were profitable this week. I hope that um, um, I hope that you made good choices in your week. Um, I started drinking again after a year and three months of being sober. Uh, so we will see if my life is going to go to shambles 
or if uh, I'm going to be okay. I'm just kidding. I really didn't have, uh, didn't have, didn't have any issue with not drinking. I just, uh, or with drinking. Um, I just took a break because uh, I do what the fuck I want to do. And then I also do what the fuck I want to do. So I started drinking again and it's been pretty cool and it's kind of loosey goosey. It's made me uh, be able to wind down in the evenings. I still have my same rules. I never drink while the sun's up. Um, I don't exceed four drinks in an evening. Um, and I also have cut, I, when, when I used to drink, I used to do double shots in my drinks versus singles. And I've cut that too. I don't, I don't do any doubles. I just stuck, stick with the singles. Um, I keep the doubles for the percentage profit, baby doubles and triples. Um, so if you want to have a good time, if you want to come and fucking party, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification. So when I post, you know, when I post shorts, you know, when I post videos, you know, when I comment, you know, no, that's not how it works. Um, we got a TikTok. We got a Discord. We got a blank and a blank. Follow them all. They're all going to be in the description. Uh, Kenny's going to put the TikTok. Um, we're very interactive on there. I like to have fun. I like it to be a fun time. Fun time with friends uh, on the TikTok. Um, if if you want to if you want to if you want to do a video with me, comment below. If you want to jump in here and let's let's. Uh, uh, let's get on, let's get on, uh, zoom together, you know, friends that zoom together, stay together. So if you're out there and I know you, if you're out there and you're in the area and you hear my intro banging up here in the office, <laughs> knock on the door. I got the ring camera set up. I know if you're out there, if you hear this playing, come on in and party. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you come back and have fun again. <laughs>